My name is Tehuya. I'm 26 years old. I live in Waikino. I live in my mum dorm. I train for the Roru Safa half Ironman. I training, swimming, cycling, running. Training lots, lots all the time. I call the rocket band, yeah. Tahuia is a dream. He's always ready to do things. He will do anything he's able to do to help people if he can. Can get dressed after your breakfast. After your breakfast, okay? From my point of view, independence for Tahuia is very important. It is limited into how much independence he can have, but where he can, I'm all for it. How many years? Yeah, wait for the alarm to go. How many years on vacation now? How many? About 70 years. About that, yeah. Um, I live with autisms. Tahuya lives with autism, intellectual disability and epilepsy. Autism is a huge scale, really big. Prosity. Yep. <laughs> Some of them function really highly. Tahuya is probably on the moderate to lower end of, the, of his functioning. A lot of that is because of his intellectual disability as well. So the two together create more of a problem than if he just had autism. His verbal skills are fairly good. Providing he's not stressed. Now you're going to do your stretches. Stretches now. And don't forget you've got lots to do. But he can't necessarily tell people what he wants. So if you know him, you can generally guess. If you don't know him, then people can't work out what his problems are. Go back again. Three. He's been referred to as the Rocket Man. He is, he's a great runner. I'm incredibly amazed at how well he does in his running. And his triathlons have also been a real eye-opener that he's managed them so well. I'm very passionate about how he succeeds and he really wants to succeed to the best of his ability. I train for the Roru Safa half Ironman. Okay. I do some cycling at home. He's working towards the Rotorua Supper, half Iron Man. The swim's in a lake, which is not so bad, but then the bike ride is in hills, and then the run is an off-road run. So your difficulty with Rotorua Supper is your bike ride and your run. The swim is 2Ks, Bike ride's 90 k's, and the run is 21 k's. I've been told it's called the road for a supper because it is the hardest half iron man in New Zealand. Hi, David, how are you? And he's going yeah, to do it with go. his guide, David. The boy's already uh, biking. Is he? Hey, yeah. Hey, hey. Hey, sir, how are you, buddy? Hey, hey, how are you? Oh, good. And what are we doing on the bike today? Prince, fast. Good man. So we're going to do Rotorua to who are you? Rotorua, Yeah. Suffer, yes. Suffer. Always smiling. Good man. Mate. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Love it. Okay, buddy, I'm going to leave you and let you finish your bike ride, okay? Bye, Bye David. Bye. Bye, David. Bye. Bye. See you later.
I think he, he is generally self-motivated. Very rarely, and I mean very rarely, do I have to say to him, are you gonna go for a run? I do my running every day. One, two, three, four, five, six. I done 10 kilometers every day. He got into running because he needed something to do. Team sports can be a bit rough and he doesn't like being knocked around. My grandchildren were going to Pyro Amateur Athletics at the time and we knew the people that run it. They were incredible showing him how to run and he hasn't stopped since. <laughs> he just loves running. I was 55 when Tahui had come to live with me. He was nine when he come full time. I was doing respite care for an agency and Tahui had come to me usually about once every six weeks and then they needed a permanent home for him. At the time, I took it on as a temporary thing. <laughs> that has ended up lasting 20 years. <laughs> the hardest times when he came into my life would have been him adapting to a new home, realising that he was going to be staying here longer than a short duration. I guess learning what family life was like with other people in and out and going out and doing things. Tahuia as a child was frustrated. He would have lots of meltdowns because of that. When he first come here, he sat on his bed and bounced up and down. And to date, he's run as far as a full marathon. Oh, he's come a long way. <laughs> We were up 4.30. Yeah, you've got to wear that on the bike. Five minutes going to be round the back. The bike had to be down in transition, I think, by 6 o'clock in the morning. And then they get ready for their swim. Row, row, half five men. Row, row, supper. OK, turn around and come out here. I always get him up extra early because if you rush him, then he'll start getting stressed. David comes down from Auckland to compete with Tahoea in these events, yep. Going to go out there, blitz the swim, get on the bike, smash it, and then... Run. Just have a leisurely half high man, uh, half marathon to finish off. Oh, everyone's a little bit anxious, I'm sure, at the start, you know. Even the top guys get a little bit of anxiety. Just doesn't seem to face Tahuya. He just gets in, turns his arm over, and he's away. Just explain what this happened. Uh, go well. Let's go well. See you on. Yep. Have fun. <laughs> yep. See you on the other side. Oh, very proud. Very, very proud. <laughs> it, there's no way you can explain just how awesome it is but to see him out there doing all of this. Just easy at the start, OK? Easy, easy, easy at the start. Go. 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 Running and triathlons is his happy place. That's what keeps his autism and intellectual disability on an even plane. The disability Tahuya has got is an invisible disability. It does become more obvious when they see that there's two of them then people notice that and they realise one of them's got a disability. 
I think it's great that he's on a level playing field. He's got his Special Olympics, but he's also got the area where he's out with everybody else in the mainstream and just competing with mainstream. It's a great life for him. For Tuhui is swimming, he trains with Shannon Cleave at Fast Lane Fitness in Hamilton. I do some swimming with Shannon. Okay, so I do four to warm up. Four. Yep. Is it going? Yeah. Okay. Go. I like to challenge him to do more. So when it was suggested by Shannon that he tries a triathlon, I said to her, well, he can barely swim 25 metres. And she goes, oh, I'll help him to swim further. She's been awesome. She's taken him from barely coping with 25 metres to now swimming over 2Ks. OK, so we're going to do a pyramid. One. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Five. Four. Yeah. Three. Two. One. Yeah. Okay. Good. Go. I first saw Tahuia swim at a local event that we were having for modern pentathlon. He had a lot of energy, but it didn't really get him anywhere. So he was he was swimming like a bit of a washing machine. It's a real complex puzzle to teach Tahuia how to swim better. One. Good. He learns by copying and by someone being right there on the spot. By swimming beside him, I can stop his hands or adjust his hands as he's going so that his brain can get that connection straight away that this is what we want to change. You know, when you're swimming in the race, yep, yep, yep. what do you remember with David? His hands out. And how are your hands? Yeah. Good swim hands, eh? Hey? Yeah? Good. Yep. His swim is where he can improve. But yeah, if he comes out of the water and he's smiling, you know, that'll be a major. There didn't appear to be any problem with the swim. Shannon's doing a great job of training him. He had a great swim today. I think he got out in about 48 minutes, so it's about seven minutes quicker than he's swum the 2Ks before. In the past, I've done backstroke and other things just to keep an eye on him. Today, I didn't have to. Today, I just stayed in doing freestyle, just watching him out the side, and he was fantastic. Just swam right next door to me. It was awesome. Right here, please. My diet important for my training. I help cook. With Dawn Hope dinner. I always try to allow him to be as independent as possible. Would you put the oven on? Fantastic. Turn your temperature up a little. No, the other one. Anything that he can do, cooking, cleaning, is rewarding for him and develops his independence okay. because they're things he can do that make him feel useful. Right. The salad and tomatoes, cucumber and cheese. Yep, yep, okay. I know there was one instance that always comes to mind with me when talking about his younger days, about him making his a sandwich and the mess that he made of the sandwich and somebody was wanting to take it away and make him another one. And I said, no, no, just leave it. And he ate it and he was over the moon that he had made his own sandwich and eaten it. Lots of vegetables, lots of them. Eating healthy now, yep, healthy, yep. I guess in the early days it was like, oh God, what have I done? But it just grew and developed and yeah, he very quickly became my, my son. You forgot the cheese. Cheese him. <laughs> oh no, you didn't, sorry. sorry. So. Can't see for looking. Look. You oh. don't have somebody living in your home put the time and care and love into them that I've done with Tahuya without them being classed as your son. 
No, no, I'm Over been here. just out, us two, for... 30 years. Probably about 18 years, yeah. Mm-hmm. Good dinner? Good dinner. Again? Yeah, yeah. 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 So Toria does all the cooking in this house, yes. just about. Yep. You're a good cook. There is Mark Allen, there is Dave Scott, in New Zealand there is Cameron Brown, and here today there is Kahuya. He is one of the legends of our sport. What? Second part to the bike. Bike went fantastic for the first half. We stopped at the halfway point and we found Tahui's camel pack had blocked up. So he was getting no fluid, but luckily he'd found my spare bottle, so he'd finished that off for me. The tandem bike on this course, really hard. It's, uh, it's definitely a bit slower up the hills, mainly because we didn't have that extra chain ring on the front, I guess. But uh, it's good on the flat. Both of you are pushing, you can really wind it up. The bike had a technical issue, but they managed to finish the bike ride and they done reasonably well. Anna, how are you? Grab the bag, Amy. Hey, you see? What the heck? Anne Marie's my second daughter, and Charlie, her husband, is from Kenya. Tahuia comes here for, you know, sometimes a couple of days, up to a week. So, um, are you going to come out with me on the farm come. and we'll do some work? Um, what? Yeah, yeah. Yes. Do you want to go and help me clean another trough? Yes, please. Yeah. yeah. It's about giving him as much variety as possible and as much independence as possible um, where he's in a safe environment. Yeah, oh, look, it's easy. It's half empty. Oh. Huh. Hardly anything to get out. Went out to the farm, Whitehall, felt the trough, trough out, felt the war out for the cows to drink. Yeah, look at that, it's really dirty. Oh, yeah? What's the fence? I'm good, how are you? That's good. Good. How's the fence? Fence good. He's been milking the cows. Cow? Yeah, she's good for me. Well, the main job that we likes doing is rubbing the weeds, helping with the garden, um, and this trough job's a good job that he does involving water. He's always had a passion for water and he'll enjoy playing with water. So it's quite apt that he's doing a lot of swimming now. <laughs> well, Mama. Yeah. Perfect. He'll not ever start a job that he won't finish. It's like he might be grubbering weeds or something and if you don't pull him in, he'll never stop. <laughs> Should I let some water in and we'll give it a minute? <laughs> You, you rinse it around with this while it's coming in. The best plan that we have for the future is that um, we're living on the farm here now permanently, so we just want to um, have a place for them here so that they're really close by and always handy. He doesn't worry about his future, I don't think. He knows that one day he will be helped by other people. Yep. You don't want any? Yes. You sure? Yes, please. I thought you were giving it all to me. No. No. He'll still be on the farm, but then there'll be somebody else there to help him, and me too, probably. <laughs> Did you tell them the story of Kenya, Tahuya, no. when we mm. went to Kenya? Last oh, night. No. Mm. And do you remember the mosquitoes? Yes. Yes, yep. you had to sleep under the net, eh? They fell on the net. Mm. On the net, on the set. One day I won't be here and he needs to be able to carry on and do whatever. So, but we don't go there yet. I've got a lot more years to go yet, so. <laughs> the final of the run, 21 Ks. And it wasn't too hot. 
and a little bit of musty rain is quite nice when you're hot and <laughs> want to cool off. Both of us were obviously lacking a little bit of nutrition, bit of caffeine, bit of sugar, a lot of water. Finish your gel, you get all the gel in? Yes. Second half of the run, he just came alive and he was, yeah, himself. To who he was telling me on the run today that we've been doing it for six years. <laughs> I had no idea. So it started off as we were meant to do a road for a marathon, which Athletics New Zealand were kind enough to give us a free entry into. From there, we've just carried on and He's learnt to swim and we've got into a few triathlons and he does bloody well. Tahuya done five hours fifty-five, which is Pretty good time. Very proud. Very proud. What was it like? Like was hot. Was hot? Was hot then. Was hot. hard? Hard to hot. Yep, yep. <laughs> Would you do it again? Here we go. 2024. 2024? 2025. 2025? Yes. Every year. Yep, yep. You reckon? 2025. <laughs> Oh, I'm extremely proud of Tauria. Any young person his age should have to be proud of their accomplishments if they've done what he's done. It's been a privilege, it's been a challenge, and it's been very rewarding. In the future, I do more thoughts. I want to do the full harmony. I pulled the rocket back here. Yeah.